It's Saturday, February 13th. You got Goose and you're entering into the core. And today I got a great episode for you guys because we're going to get to meet the new CEO of the Zellcore wallet. I'm also joined by Daniel Keller, who's our chief strategy officer. And we're going to talk about the CEO's vision for Zellcore, which includes DeFi. You're not going to want to miss this episode, guys. So without further ado, let's get into it. And joining me on today's episode is Tim Tully, the new CEO of the Zellcore Wallet, and of course, Daniel Keller, who is our Chief Strategy Officer. Gentlemen, how are you today? Fantastic. Uh, good to meet you in person, Goose and Dan. Good to see you again. Good to see you. And Goose, as always, it's great to be on the core. Hey, it's great to have you both on the core podcast. And I'm so excited to talk to you both at the same time, because this is going to give us a great opportunity to get to know Tim a little better. And also maybe some of the uh, the direction that Zellcore is going to be taking in the coming months. So uh, perhaps, you know, we could just dive right in uh, with some basic background stuff, you know, like maybe Tim, tell us a little bit about where you're coming from and how you discovered Zellcore. Okay, uh, good question. I'm a uh over 30 plus years in the financial services area. Um, I've been around the block, so to speak, in a lot of different ways. You know, I've been on the buy side, I've been on the sell side, I've been in the private markets, uh, I've been in the public markets, I've been in the banking side, lending. Um, I've worked for the, depending on what month, the top one or two uh, global custodians, BMI Mellon and State Street. I've worked at two of the world's largest asset managers, including the first asset manager to, to have a trillion dollars in assets under management. That was Fannie Mae in the mid nineties. Um, so I've been kind of all that space um, in a lot of different senior roles in the tech, in technology, as well as uh, for over six years running the wealth management business uh, for BNY Mellon Wealth Management. So uh, I've been around the block, so to speak, but probably my most important experience has been as the father of three millennials. And that I think that has prepared me well for the impending crypto take over the world. Well, tell me about that. Like, you know, what does that look like? You know, one of your kids comes to you and says, hey, dad, I need you to buy me some crypto. Like what? <laughs> no, I, I, the, the best example is, you know, this is how they communicate. And this is, they, they have a wallet in their back pocket. It has no cash in it. Um, they're frankly not interested in using cash. Um, they use debit card, credit card, Venmo, uh, any payment system you can think of. Um, they have the same frustrations that we all do that it takes three days for Venmo to sell. Um, you know, but, uh, I think one of the things that attracted me to the financial services business and frankly to, to Zellcor was, um, in, the impending wealth transfer gap, the transfer, wealth transfer between baby boomers and the millennials, estimated recently at around $70 trillion. All of that money is going to go down to the millennials. Um, and uh, their stats show that about 80% of the inheritance, if you will, uh, those, people, those millennials that receive that wealth transfer will switch advisors, right? So if you're worried about that and you're in the you're in the finance space, you better be really well aligned with what the millennials want and need. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the worldwide, the mobile phone usage is somewhere in the high 90s. Um, and even in, in the underdeveloped countries, it's in the 80% range, right? So that's how business is going to be conducted. It is today, um, really not digitally. I think the truth is we've automated manual processes electronically. We haven't digitized the world yet, and I think that's where we're headed. Um, so I think the the millennials are really ready for um, they're ready for digital cash, digital payments, digital everything. Um, they want to do everything on their mobile device. And I personally believe, and and I was at T. Rowe Price in the late '90s when the internet started, and um, this feels very similar to me with the crypto infrastructure. And it's my belief that it is the future rail system for all finance, finances and plenty of other other businesses, but in particular, the finance space. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, and especially when you come to uh, millennials, you're saying three days on, uh, you know, Cash App or Venmo or what have you. 
that's an eternity to a millennial, you know? Uh, but crypto, on the other hand, really has the potential to make that a near instantaneous transaction. Uh, yep. and that's something that um, you can really tap into uh, with the right wallet, right? Uh, and so Zelcor offers a lot of those kinds of features, right? So what, what is it about uh, Zelcor as a wallet that you think that, that uh, kind of taps into some of that? Yeah, I, I think um, what I was most excited about in Zelcor is I, I, I believe that we will always end up with a universe where we have some segment of the population that wants high convenience and high security, but is willing to trade off a little bit for that, right? And then there are those that are really hands-on, they want super control, but their complexity comes with that. And what I like about the Zellcor platform is it, it's, it can provide, it can fit in both of those spaces. And I think in particular, the security level is really high. We, we don't store your personal data, which is a huge issue. And I think it is, it is in fact digital. Your personal data will be a digital asset that you will decide and make a decision about whether you'll get paid for your personal data or not. You don't get paid today. The, the incumbents do, nope. right? And uh, so I think that's a real key feature. But I, the, I think probably the most important one is as the crypto infrastructure um, evolves, there'll be many coins, there'll be many different blockchains, versions of the blockchain, forks off the blockchain. And I think most users don't want to get involved in that level of complexity. They want someone that keeps them on top of that and brings everything together in a very easy, really powerful UI and UX experience. And I think Zellcore can do that. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's already proving itself in that department because the simplification of just having a, a username and password kind of approach as opposed to, you know, seed phrases and other mnemonic key phrases and stuff that you have to remember. Nobody likes to write stuff down. <laughs> yeah. But we tell everybody, especially when we have to do some tech support with them, that if you don't remember your username and password, there's nothing we can do because that that's for you. You know, it's it's in it's your Zellcore it's your key. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of very interesting things that Zellcore is working on currently, uh, which which seem to be tapping into the, the DeFi space. So um, wh where do you see that kind of relationship with, um, you know, the people that are looking for something easy to use, but then kind of tapping into this whole DeFi space? Doesn't DeFi make things more complicated? Um, well, I, I think, you know, I think DeFi is evolving, right? And I think it, it will empower the future. And I, th I think the greatest example of that is, um, you know, we, we've ar we already power some decentralized exchanges. And we allow that to happen. And for those that are not super familiar with that, right, a centralized exchange is the Coinbase's Gemini, uh, those type of the world and then there you know there's uniswap and and we're getting ready to announce very near, in the very near future a partnership uh, a very uh, tight partnership with cadena and specifically cadena swap and so we will allow users to decide um not only do they want to um buy and trade their and swap crypto in here but also eventually stake and provide liquidity for in, in return for interest uh, I'm super excited about that, and I, and I think those are that's just the beginning of what the DeFi capability uh, can bring. I think you're right. I think it's it's complex, and I think it will evolve over time. But the potential is is really unbelievable, explosive. Now I'll just add on to there that uh, you know I think uh, the education on what exactly kind of de decentralized finance or decentralized computational networks the importance of decentralization, we've seen that recently. So we've seen these th these different deplatforming of m different models. We've seen, uh, you know, the shutdown of Robinhood and, and kind of some of the things that happened there. And so the end users that are coming to the space now, they, they actually have something that they can look at and say, well, that is a use case for, for these de decentralized platforms. You know, you can't censor them. You can't stop them. You can't shut them down in the 11th hour. And and I think that's big. I think that's going to be a big selling point to the platform as well. Yeah. Hey, that's a great point. And I think it's a great example. Frankly, I think it's another, there's a lot of momentum in this space. 
But but I think this is one of the whole Robin Hood experience is one of those things we're going to look back on two, two, three, four, five years from now and say that was the catalyst for the move to decentralize, right? And so in particular, hmm. I think many people who stood behind the belief, the democratizing finance, we're going to have all of these accounts, people are going to freely buy and sell for free their, um, their, their uh, securities. Um, and when, and, and what, what in fact happened is they control your assets. In this case, Robin Hood, the, this entity, this central authority um, entity. And, and what happened was when the market went, depending on where you were, either up or, up or down, um, they restricted your trading, right? So I'm sure many people are like, what do you mean? I, these are my assets. I, sh I decide whether I um, trade or not. That's the centralized finance model. In the decentralized model, you'll keep your uh, control of your assets. You'll keep them stored in custody in a platform like, like Zalcor or, or others. And you'll decide if, if a Robin Hood or someone decides they're going to restrict trading on a certain crypto or security, whatever, you'll say, that's fine. I'm going to go. I'll, I'll take my assets and go somewhere else. You can't do that in today's world. Um, and I really think this is, a, be a, is going to be a huge catalyst for the future. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, one of the big things that gets me excited about DeFi um, is is the fact that you have that option. There's a, there's so many uh, outlets for DeFi right now, and it includes so many different things beyond just swapping crypto. But the brilliance of it is that it's a uh, computer code, a smart contract that makes it possible for me to trade with you. And that's it. Like there, there doesn't have to be any intermediary other than the blockchain and the contract itself, you know, and there are fees involved, but that's negligible compared to what it could be if you're using an app like Robinhood or if you're, you know, trading uh, more seriously, you know, so um, what, what about, uh, you know, so we, we do have all these different directions that you can go with DeFi. And uh, of course, since uh, Zelcor and Cadena Swap will, will be a thing, um, what, what would you say your vision is for Zelcor as we move into the future? Well, I think, um, let, let me just say one thing about smart contracts and I'll come back to that particular one because I'll give you a, a, what I, where I see Zelcor headed, right? One is as somebody who's worked at the, the world's largest custodians and those folks have tried to address the scale challenge with labor arbitrage and et cetera, and they just can't do it fast enough. I, I'm of the belief that the implementation of smart smart contracts on a blockchain will make that problem go away, right? The, the system will drive a lot of that behavior, which is currently done manually and, and, and not done well and fast enough in a, in a cost effective way. So um, the smart contract one, I think, is another really big win for the crypto infrastructure. As it relates for where I see Zelcor heading, you know, and, and this as somebody who's been in the wealth management space, you know, the holy grail is to come up with a an investment solutions that that's curated for the particular individual, right? So let's take let's take Dan. You know, Dan's in Pennsylvania. Uh, he's in his mid forties. Um, he's an attractive young man who's got a bunch of children. So how do we come up with a portfolio that's really tuned specifically to him? And I think the reality is, as all the assets get digitized and other things that we haven't talked about get tokenized, we'll end up with a situation where Dan's got a portfolio that has, you know, 20 percent large cap. He's got some fixed income. Well, that's still debatable. He's going to have some crypto in there. He's going to have art. He's going to have music. He's going to have real estate. He might have um, he might have a piece of a loan portfolio in his general neighborhood. Um, he's going to have things like he may have an investment in a hip hop artist who is, you know, in, instead of crowdsourcing, as we know it today, tokenizing investments. I think people like Dan will now have access to, you know, private equity and venture capital and these other things which had prior to this had $250,000 minimums, right? So a huge new world gets opened here. Where Zalcor comes in is those assets are liquid, they're illiquid, they're across multiple blockchains, and they potentially could be in and out of the crypto world. Zelcor will sit on top of that for you, and, and you will not have to worry about 
interpreting all that. Think of it like a browser for the blockchain. It enables the blockchain that way. Um, and it will allow you to transact. I think smart contracts will be underneath there that will execute and rebalance and do different things. Um, but Zelcor will be that empowerment tool. The other important thing that I really like Zelcor has, has been this way to date and will be that way in the future. We're not going to pick winners and losers. Losers, you know, we support over 250 uh, coins today. Uh, we'll support all the decentralized exchanges. We'll support the market participants. We'll let the market forces pick winners and losers. It won't be us. And I and I think that right now there's a lot of players that are really focused on too small a segment of the market, at the exclusion of others. And that's not the mo the method we're going to take. Wow, that's awesome. So I love that idea. Like this. Uh a, a, a browser for blockchain. I think that's really cool. And and so you're saying like, so the vision then really is basically like something that is familiar and, and uh, easy to use and then taps you into all of these different resources. So you're saying there's like the sky's the limit when it comes to like, uh, you know, what kind of features you're going to add, like as far as what coins are in there, what um, DeFi services are in there. That's all kind of under the same yep. uh, vision. Huh? Awesome. Yeah. I love that. I, I think that's great. Yeah, I, I also think that the company is at an inflection point. You know, there's there's a couple paths we could go. I think one is we could partner with an incumbent institution that wants to leapfrog where they are technology wise. Um, there's a lot of folks that want to get into blockchain uh, for the future. They're just not ready today, and this might be a way to get them in there. Uh, I think, and they also. They've got this millennial problem we talked about earlier, right? In addition to the to the infrastructure getting there, they also have a, a client demand and client retention issue they need to deal with. Mm. I think we could also partner with a lot of the market participants in the crypto world today um, to help empower and and um, and raise the uh, the visibility and exposure of their platform. Or we could look to uh, to go to the marketplace and do a, a, a series raise and continue to build out the product over time. And this is the point in time where we need to figure out which one of those paths we choose. There's a lot of options. Um, what's really nice about and I, I like what you said about uh, giving other projects uh, more exposure. Zelcor is available on multiple different platforms. Like we, we've got a Windows, a Mac OS, Linux as an app image we've got android ios so there, there's even a, the wall even the huawei store now huawei too oh great so the apk you know you can get that for your um yep. yeah so there's a lot of great you know platforms there so it just means you know exposure not just for zelcor but for whatever zelcor offers you know and that includes partnerships so i think yep. that's really cool uh, cuz it's it's I, it, it's a service that's overlooked i think you know I do like I do like how Tim methodically said we're not going to pick winners or losers, so we're not we're not beholden to any one particular platform. So we're adding whatever the best of the best in the space is, and we'll let the market sort it out. And one thing that we that we're we're not going to do that some of the legacy based systems are going to do we're not going to shut it down when it gets when it gets hot and heavy. Uh, you know what I mean? We, that that's the whole goal. Uh, we talked about the the Robin Hood scenario and. Uh, there are other situations, large exchanges that shut down uh, just just when you hit all time high. Isn't that a coincidence? So yeah, I'm not calling anybody out, but I am. I'm saying that we're not we're not going to be the ones that are going to be that 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 middle person to say who wins and loses. Well, first of all, we can't, right? So <laughs> the if yep. if you're the one who's in control, then and and, and by you i mean user if the user is the one who's in control there there is no centralized authority that's making decisions like that yeah that's right so great point but even in today's world today's crypto infrastructure world you've got you know dan just gave an example right and there there are there are markets that are making winners and losers even in the crypto world and there are even wallets and platforms that don't accept don't support certain currencies certain cryptos. So you got to jump through a lot of hoops sometimes to, if you want to swap crypto or even even swap out from crypto to a fiat currency. Oh, yeah, well, we have, um, I know recently there was an ad from Wire that enables the purchase of, of crypto with fiat, which is really cool. 
uh, as well as the um, InstaSwap exchanges that are built into Zellcore. That's just like a, I think, a foreshadowing of what's to come with something like integrating Kadena Swap and what have you. Um, so we've talked a little bit about this whole Robin Hood sort of fiasco, you know, the GameStop thing and, and how they shut things down to make it so that you couldn't trade. Um, how, how does, um, you know, including something like Kadena Swap sort of reinforce uh, where you stand with DeFi? Well, I think it's it's really the platform that allows people to um, to choose when and where and how. And frankly, I think one of the other it's very expensive right now to to um, execute some transactions on on some of the other decentralized exchanges. I think that's one of the winning uh, formulas for the Cadena Swap solution. Um, so we're happy to help empower them. But I also think, you know, one of the things Goose, I'm personally most excited about in the in the legacy or the analog world, call it whatever you want. You know, when you put your cash at a um, uh, one of our um, legacy institutions, you, you might be get let's say you have one hundred thousand dollars. You might be getting forty five basis points in interest. Right. In the crypto world, if you have that same hundred thousand dollars in whatever crypto unit, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, pick your pick your poison, um, you have the opportunity to pledge or stake those units uh, with a provider and earn eight, 10, 12 percent interest. Right. They're actually competing for your. And in fact, you're you're now that you have control of your assets, you're the one that can get paid for your liquidity in today's world. The, the broker dealer, whoever's got your assets, they're the ones that are getting paid for your liquidity. And I think this is where the cadena swaps of the world will facilitate that, um, the execution of it, and Zellcore will sit on top and allow it for you to be really easy to say, hey, I want to pick yield, I want to pick time, whatever parameter you want to pick, you'll just press a button and it'll make it happen for you behind the scenes. And what what are we talking like fee wise? Do you have any uh, sort of speculation on like uh, how it would compare with the current DeFi structure, like uh, some of the other popular I, platforms? Well, I can talk about KDA specifically, and KDA kind of figured it out in terms of scaling their proof of work, work pro project that can scale up to twenty chains, and what that does is give them the ability to institute um, uh, what they call gas stations that essentially provide. Uh, uh, like uh, a fee helps to pay for the fees for the for the transaction, so it's going to be super cheap. And Goose, I think I think as you see other other platforms come out, they're going to continue to keep buying for that 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 lower fee structure. People will pay Uniswap fees because it's the only game in town, but that's about to change. So, uh, and I think I, I agree with what Tim said earlier about DeFi being uh, it, it's a maturity piece. 97%, 98% of DeFi was was not good. You know, it was it was uh, FOMO and froth. Uh, but the two or three percent that that that's coming out of it, and we're seeing uh, really start to mature. Man, it look out! It's going to be awesome. Good to know. Yeah, I mean, a anything that saves people money is going to definitely draw the crowd. I I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> if, yep. you're in, if you're into doing swaps like this, uh, this is going to be a really cool way uh, to save a few bucks and hopefully uh, put put more interest, more yield in, in your own pocket. So really cool. Well, not only not only not only that goose bigger than that is it mitigates your risk of loss because if you have your assets on an exchange, you may be getting that they may be staking it, they may be making the money, you may be making a pass through call, you know, uh, pass through you know passive income but you don't control your asset. So these particular platforms allow you to maintain custody of your asset so you, you're not risk adverse, and that's huge. Yeah, or at least you take your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know, uh, I only speak from you know, a position of somebody who has gotten wrecked, but now I'm a lot wiser for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a rite think, of passage it's, it is a rite, a rite of, passage. of passage yes you have to you have to at least once get wrecked and then you'll be okay yeah. <laughs> but you know we're providing a you know i think with zelcor um th there's so many uh at least 
what I see in terms of a prospectus of what tools are going to be made available um, that still, you know, help people to understand what it is that they're getting involved in and how they, they can make best use of it, you know. Uh, otherwise, you know, the, the team stays out of the way. It's, it's, it's your decision. You decide. Yep. Um, yep. So uh, there's one other component that I, you know, that we really didn't uh, touch upon, and, and that is this, um, this, this incorporation of, or, or I should say the relationship between the Flux asset, the cryptocurrency, uh, which is running the 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 Zell, or <laughs> I'm still having a hard time myself. The Flux Network, um, and how that kind of uh, you know fits in with Zell Core. So can can, can both of you or either of you uh, you know speak to yeah, a little I, bit to that? I, I, I'll talk a little bit about the fusion piece in a minute. But Dan has been uh, more than immersed in the uh, the work we're doing here, so I'll let him answer first. Goose, I think it goes back to dealing with, um, you know, uh, opportunity and, and we continue to kind of keep developing on Flux. We, we understand exactly um, what the path is for that project now. You know, it's, a de it's decentralized cloud services and the cadence will continue to keep com coming and Zellcore will continue to kind of harvest all those opportunities that are brought to Flux. So, uh, you know, somewhat similar as to what Zellcore is doing as kind of that that uh, web browser for blockchain. Well, Flux is given the infrastructure to run that. So, you know, really in tandem, they, they can, it's kind of a symbiotic relationship where they continue to keep benefiting themselves. But one of those is a community-based project that is Flux, Flux the asset and Flux the ecosystem. And the other is a private company, which is, which is Zellcore. So, uh, you know, we want to continue ta tapping into all the resources that 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 powerful powerful chain has to offer. So, yeah, nice, yeah, and that's the one. All those nodes that are running are are essentially what's powering Kadena Swap. Yes. Well, yes, yes, I know. Infrastructure. There, there's multiple facets of their infrastructure, but we do host about over. I think the last number I got was uh, close to 300. Uh, of the nodes run on the flux infrastructure so and the the one big positive thing uh is uh this the cadena swap will be native to zelcor so when you're using zelcor it'll, it'll be intuitive it'll be straightforward you know and that's how we plan on really developing all these different platforms out in zelcor awesome well you know, I, I think this has been great, guys. It gave us a really good opportunity to get to know Tim a little bit better and to kind of see, you know, his vision of where things are going to be moving. I love this idea of a blockchain browser. Um, and if that can be on a cell phone, uh, a mobile device in everybody's pocket and make it so easy for them to be able to transact. I mean, just think about the massive implications of that for, for a, a worldwide sort of approach. And uh, I love how grandiose your vision is you know so kudos man um anything else either of you want to add about the project and where we're where we stand what do we have coming up in the next uh in the next quarter or two I, i'd say probably the biggest is the uh and you'll see the where you know we got a press release coming out a lot of communication and awareness around the cadena swap work and then uh hopefully we'll be we'll be close on some of the staking efforts and and supporting more of the D, DeFi. uh apps coming out. Um, I, I, what I would say in closing, you know, big things are coming from Zellcore. I'm super excited. And I, I also think that I think we internally feel like it's, this is the best kept secret in crypto. We got to make sure that we get the secret out and make sure that more people know how powerful this really is. Excellent. Yeah. And I'll just add into that. Uh, it's been, a, it's been unbelievably refreshing to have Tim on the project. He brings a, a totally unique perspective because he's been in the legacy space and now he understands the the, the the fintech the blockchain space and he brings this 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 air of confidence and i'm not tooting your horn you call me good, good looking tim so i can at least say that you're you, you're adding all this to it as well Appreciate <laughs> so, that. so yeah i, I mean it, it really it, it 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 kind of has energized the team and the direction um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm good at certain things, but Tim is really, really good at laying out that plan and looking at how we can, who do we court and how do we court them? How do we approach them? How, what's the cadence that we use and how do we speak? I mean, those are things that are being, re being refined every day and Tim's leading that. So we're really happy to have him on. Good. Thanks, Dan. 
Yep. Well, gentlemen, it's been real. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk with us, and uh, we'll look forward to you know some of the progress. Maybe we can uh, you know have a little uh, do another follow up session in a, in a few months and see how things are going for a uh, quarter two. But uh, until then, guys, let's keep building, huh? All right. Thanks for your time, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Well. Okay. Peace.